In this video, we'll be talking about Compton effect. And, and we will try to derive an expression for, for Compton shift. So, uh, to start with, uh, when we have x-rays, I mean, when x-rays, uh, when x-rays, when these x-rays fall on matter, what happens a part of uh, uh, a part of uh, the x rays uh, they are scattered uh, without any change in the wavelength and and this is known as unmodified or or we call it as classical scattering so you have x rays you bombard them on a ma on matter and and a part of scattered x-rays uh, they scatter without any change in the wavelength and this is what is called as classical scattering and in in 1922 uh, it was compton and what compton did he used he used break crystal we understand what a crystal is it has uh, it has a symmetric arrangement of atoms or molecules and uh, and and if if we irradiate the these crystals we have reflection of the irradiation uh, by virtue of uh, diffraction of light uh, and interference of light. So what Compton uh, discovered from this Bragg crystal uh, spherometer, uh, what he discovered that in addition to this, uh, this classical scattering uh, in which the wavelength of x-rays remain unchanged, there, there, there are the, the secondary radiations uh, uh, that that contain X-rays of, of lower frequency uh, or uh, or higher wavelength. In addition to the classical scattering, he he could find uh, he could find the radiations of of lower frequencies or longer wavelength than those of the x-rays, than, than those of uh, the incident radiations. And, and this is what is called as Compton effect. So what he found, he found the, the additional scattered radiations, uh, whose frequencies were low. That means their wavelengths were large. And, and this effect is known as Compton effect. Now, what were the basic uh, assumptions uh, that were used uh, and that should be used in, in obtaining an expression, in obtaining uh, the expression for this shift in wavelength? <coughs> Now, the very first assumption uh, that, that, that's used is that, that we use the X-rays having some frequency uh, and X-rays certainly they contain photons and they have energy H, H nu and they have momentum H by lambda and we can change this lambda as H nu by c so this is the momentum of of the of the particles of of photon of photons and this is the energy of the the photons and and the next important point the next assumption uh, that that's used here is is that that electrons are assumed to be free uh, uh, and and stationary in this case right so electrons are free and 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 stationary 
So, so what does it mean? It's 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 if if we go back uh, to the electrons, okay, uh, uh, it, it's because their binding energy of the electrons uh, in an atom uh, is of the order of uh, uh, is of the order of nearly ten electron volts. And uh, if if we talk about uh, if we talk about X rays. Uh, the energy with which they are bombarded on on the matter uh, is of the order of 10 kilo electron volts. So if we make the co the two comparisons, uh, well, we can assume that this electron is is free and and stationary, right? So <clears throat> so this is another important uh, assumption and. Uh, and and to move forward, the, the kinetic energy of electron with whom this this photon is going to interact, uh, that uh, that energy is being of the same order uh, as the binding energy, uh, uh, as the binding energy that that we are talking about here, right? Now the the, the next important point here is uh, the collision between this photon and electron. Now, as I said previously, that how do we assume this uh, photon to be an elastic ball? Assuming this electron to be a, an elastic ball, what we uh, assume here is that the collision between this high energy photon, the photon and the electron, this collision is, uh, this collision is elastic. That means if it is elastic, then the, the, the conservation uh, uh, the conservation uh, laws are valid. That means that the energy is conserved before and after the collision, and the momentum is conserved before and after the collision of uh, of the of the photon and electron. Now, if I have to sketch it, uh, I would like to draw. Uh, a diagram to get an idea that what's going on is what we have is we have we have an electron which is assumed to be at rest and we have a photon and let us assume that this photon is moving along the x direction right and we have what we have is uh, is the scattered uh, photon in this direction and what we have here is is the uh, is the electron being scattered now if this is the original motion of the the photon and i assume that this angle is phi and this angle is uh, is theta and this is my electron here and this is my incident photon and it has an energy h nu and it has the momentum h nu by c that's right now if i if i resolve this uh, h nu dash i have the energy of h nu dash with respect to phi then this should be h nu dash by c uh, cos phi uh, for the component of momentum uh, which is uh, h nu dash by c here okay so the component one of the component will be h nu dash by c cos phi and another component will be perpendicular and that is h nu dash by c sine theta and then uh, if we look towards uh, the the, the electron being scattered, uh, this scattered electron uh, will also have two components. One will be in the downward direction and one will be uh, in the, uh, along the x direction. So I would like to add that here as mv, uh, mv cos theta. And here will be another component that is mv sine theta okay so so that's the case here so we have uh, we have resolved uh, this uh, 
uh, we have resolved the components, uh, the, the components that are equal, uh, involved in, in this diagram into their uh, corresponding components uh, for momentum, uh, for the photon and momentum for the uh, electron. So here we have scattered photon. So this is S photon. And here we have, in this direction, we have scattered electron. Now, what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to use the, the, the conservation laws to obtain the expression for, for Compton shift. So this diagram should be clear, right? So now let us, uh, let us do, uh, let's do the business in terms of conservation laws. Now, what will be the first thing uh, that, that we would like to, uh, we would like to, uh, we would like to state with and to start with is that if I suppose that M0 is the, is the rest mass, it is the rest mass of electron and then uh, th then its mass while moving with the velocity v uh, can be written as m equal to m naught by under root of 1 minus v square by c square okay this should be the case uh, uh, if I have the rest mass of an electron equal to m0, then its relativistic mass will be uh, m0 by one uh, by under root of 1 minus v square by c square. And in this equation, uh, we understand that this c is velocity of light. c is velocity of light. And this... Uh, this v is uh, it's the it, it it is the it's the speed of electron speed of uh, electron all right so m not is the mass of the electron now the very first thing that i would like to do is i would like to apply uh, the the conservation of energy uh, in this diagram so applying conservation of energy as we understand that this collision is assumed to be elastic in nature so so that so the energy should be conserved so in doing so we have the energy of the incident x-ray photon that is h nu then plus uh, the rest mass energy of this uh, electron that is m naught c square is equal to then we have uh, uh, we have the energy of the scattered photon that is h nu dash plus uh, m c square now this should be the case now from this equation what we would like to uh, to what would we like to to have is this m c square so this m c square is equal to h uh, new minus new dash so this is new minus new dash plus m naught c square now if we do scaring and adding to this equation so squaring and adding now, why should i add it at this moment of time and with what should i add it so I'm wrong here. I would like to get the squared equation for this. If I do that, I will get m square c to the power of 4. That will be equal to h square times nu minus nu dash plus uh, m c square whole square. Okay. So that should be the case. And when 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 we will expand this so what we will have uh, we will have we will have m square c to the power of 4 uh, is equal to uh, that will be h square times nu square minus twice nu nu dash plus nu dash square 
then plus twice h times new minus new dash uh, times m naught c square plus m naught square c to the power of 4. So uh, this is very simple uh, algebraic formulation that can be done. It's exactly a plus b ka whole square and this uh, this equation can be expanded and, and we can have a we can have a result. Now, uh, looking for uh, looking for uh, applying uh, the, the conservation of momentum. So I should name this equation as equation one, okay, for the time being. Now, what we would do is, uh, since we are dealing with a two-dimensional problem, so we will have conservation of momentum along x-axis, and then we will have conservation of momentum along y-axis. So if I write down the conservation conservation of momentum along x-axis. So what, what will this, uh, this conservation give me uh, is you have the momentum h nu by c, right, uh, and plus uh, we are assuming it to be at rest, so it is zero, is equal to uh, what will be your momentum uh, after, uh, after, after the collision. This will be h nu dash by c, that's here, then cos phi, uh, that's here, uh, and then plus this mv cos theta. So we will have an equation h nu by c equal to h nu dash by c cos phi plus mv cos theta. And, and this should be the, uh, the equation that we will get along the x-axis. And if we choose to get mv cos theta as mv cos theta, uh, c will come here uh, when you will transform it. So what you will get is h times nu minus nu dash cos phi. Okay, so I would like to call this equation as, as equation number two. Okay, so this is my conservation of momentum along x-axis. Now let me go with the, with the conservation of momentum along, uh, along y-axis. So this is my five. So conservation of momentum along y axis. Now what's going to happen in this case is that, uh, uh, that you have the photon, uh, uh, the, you have the photon having a momentum along the x axis alone. So uh, so we have zero here equal to uh, the upper side momentum that is h nu dash by c sine theta. Now uh, m v sine theta is opposite, so this is m v sine theta. Right? Uh, this should be the case. And from here we can have this m v. The c will come up. C sine theta equal to h nu dash, there's nothing by now, sine theta. Okay, so this is my equation three. Now what I have is I have used the, the conservation of momentum and what I have now is I have equation two as mv, co MV c cos theta equal to this damn thing, then I have equation three uh, with mv c sine theta uh, as the left hand side and then in the right hand side. So what would I like to do here is, uh, is uh, scaring and adding. What two and, and three. So very simple, we can understand it here. This will be m square v square c square, then you will have sine square theta plus cos square theta, and that's equal to one. So what you will have here is 
m square v square c square uh, is equal to and then what what you are going to do is you have to uh, you have to have the squaring of this and and squaring of this and we will have h square uh, in the simplified form it will be h square times new square minus twice new new dash cos phi then plus we will have new dash square cos square phi then plus we will have new uh, dash uh, square sine square phi this is what will come uh, from uh, from the addition of 2 and 3 uh, before they are squared with each other and you, you can see these two terms will die uh, and we will have only new dash square here so we will have m square v square c square is is h square times new square and uh, then we are going to have minus twice new new dash cos phi and then we will have plus new dash square this is uh, this is going to be the result here now this equation that we have here this is m naught square c square uh, uh, v square and what should we do with this equation is we should subtract this equation from uh, from equation one so here is my equation i'll call this uh, equation a so i would like to subtract this equation from this equation from this equation so we can see here uh, what 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 am i going to expect is this m square c to the power of four here i have m square c square so m square c square can be common uh, between these two and then we will have some other results so what's going to be here is uh, this is page six no uh, what am i going to get here is uh, yeah it will be m square m square c square times c square minus v square okay and then when we will have the subtraction uh, from uh, that equation one uh, and and the equation a what we will uh, get out of it would be yeah uh, it would be like uh, it will be minus twice uh, new new dash h square times one minus cos phi uh, then plus twice h new minus new dash uh, times m not uh, m not c square plus m not square c to the power of four okay uh, this will be the result that we will get by by subtracting so subtraction subtraction from one and two okay so uh, so what should i do after this is for this m i would like to use that uh, uh, that relativistic equation for mass and that i had already written down and what's that so here i'll have m naught square by one minus v square by c square since it's the square the root of, and the square will cancel so this will be c square minus v square equal to so what will be the result from this side if i rearrange it so this i can write as m naught square c to the power of four uh, plus uh, plus two h times new minus new dash then i have m naught c square and uh, then I have minus twice new new dash h square times one minus cos phi. Okay, that should be the case. Now the point is that if when you will have this, this is m naught square by by here it is c square. So here we will have c square minus v square, 
and here we have c square minus v square now this is your m naught square c to the power of 4 plus twice h times nu minus nu dash m naught c square minus twice nu nu dash h square times 1 minus cos phi now here you can cut this c square minus v square c square minus v square this will go up uh, so what will it become and here i'm missing something here it is c square okay so this will become m naught square c to the power of 4 is equal to m naught square c to the power of 4 plus twice h times nu minus nu dash m naught c square plus twice nu nu dash h square times 1 minus cos phi now these two terms can cancel and what we will be left with uh, with uh, this equation is that uh, what we will have we will have and I transform that uh, to the other side uh, yeah here I have committed a mistake I think I think uh, this is this is minus okay now what's going to be the uh, the outcome here yeah it will be twice h times nu minus nu dash yeah m naught c square equals twice nu nu dash uh, h square times 1 minus cos phi okay we can have some cancellations this 2 and 2 can go this h and and square can go so what we are going to have after this is nu minus nu dash by nu nu dash is equal so here we have h divided by m naught uh, m naught c square yeah m naught c square uh, times 1 minus cos phi and we can resolve it so this is 1 by this is nu by nu nu dash minus nu dash by nu nu dash uh, is equal to h by m naught c square times 1 minus cos phi now from here we'll have 1 by nu dash 1 by uh, nu equals h by m naught c square times 1 minus cos phi now here we can use uh, we can use the relation between nu and lambda nu is c by lambda right so when we do that here uh, what we are going to get here is instead of new dash we will have uh, we will have c in the denominator we will have c and and in the numerator we will have lambda dash minus uh, this is c again then here we will have lambda equal to h by m naught c square times 1 minus cos phi where phi is the angle of scattering uh, of the photon with respect to the the x-axis so here we can see this c will go and we have got the Compton shift uh, in the left hand side of this equation so what we have is we have lambda dash minus lambda equal to h by m naught h by m naught uh, c times 1 minus uh, cos phi so this equation is uh, is the comp gives me the competent shift and 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 this equation is, is uh, 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 this equation is known as Compton equation sometimes uh, and and this equation certainly shows that uh, that 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 the increase in the wavelength or or the increase in this shift in the wavelength uh, is 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 independent of it is independent of it is independent of uh, the wavelength of the incident radiation as well as it is independent of the nature of the scattering sub substance it does not depend on the nature with what atoms that substance is made uh, it does not depend on that so uh, but what it depends on is this phi okay so the, the competent shift is dependent on the angle of scattering here so if we uh, if we talk about this h by m naught c it's a constant 
uh, and it's called as Compton wavelength, and we can uh, we we can use the values for h as uh, uh, nearly 6.6. .6. Uh, 10 to the power of minus 34 joule second the 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 mass of uh, electron the rest mass of electron is is 9 into 10 to the power of minus 31 uh, uh, kilograms approximately and and taking c as uh, 3 into 10 to the power of 8 uh, meter per second approximately uh, if we uh, use those uh, uh, those things uh, uh, in this uh, equation, what in this uh, in this formulation, what we get is uh, it is uh, for h we, we use 6.6 .6, 10 to the power of minus 34 joule second divide by 9 times 10 to the power of minus 31 kg times 3 times 10 to the power of 8, and this nearly comes out to be uh, it nearly comes out to be uh, 0.0. .0 242 angstrom. <clears throat> so the value of this Compton length. So I can say here this delta lambda is, is 0 0.0242 times 1 minus cos phi. What angstrom? Okay, so what does this equation tell us now is that this, this shows that the incident wavelength lambda uh, is, is scattered. It's scattered through an angle uh, equal to phi uh, by a free electron that, that was there, uh, which was assumed to be at rest. And the scattered wavelength, uh, which is uh, encompassed uh, in, this, uh, in this term uh, of, of the X-ray, is, is greater than that of the incident radiation, right? By an amount equal to this, right? So it is, it is, it is greater by amount uh, equal, to, uh, equal to this 0 0.042 times 1 minus cos phi angstrom. Now, now for the given value of, of an uh, angle phi, the, the, the shift in the wavelength uh, uh, is independent of the wavelength of the incident radiation. Right, so what it depends on is the angle of of scattering, and and the value that we calculated here for this constant, and this is known as as uh, what is it called as Compton wavelength. It's called as Compton wavelength, and the the Compton shift shift is certainly proportional to one minus cos phi, and there we will have different. Uh, values of uh, shift in, in wavelength uh, with respect to uh, the angle of scattering. So that should be uh, the conclusion of this uh, of this topic. I hope uh, uh, I hope I, I have tried my level, uh, and I hope uh, the students who will watch this video. Uh, it will help them in understanding the concept. It will help them. Uh, uh, to, it, will, it will help them, help them to, to realize uh, the, the, the nature of uh, this Compton uh, scattering and, Compton, and the derivation of this Compton, uh, Compton equation.